In this lesson, we're going to talk about a couple of uh, remaining items that we have left open. We talked very briefly about a uh, move command. So a move command is a feature that will allow us to keep the probe from crashing into the object. You have to remember that if I measure something let's say here on this front face like down here if I take a hit and then I ask it in the next command to measure something over here that it's going to try its hardest to move directly through the part. So there are a couple of uh, ways that we can deal with this. So the, the first and safe move is you made this measurement and the probe will retract to about here. Um, what we want to do is ensure that the probe doesn't go through the part so we can lift the probe up to here first and we can use this arrow here on the controller which is, will insert a move command after that measurement before we go to make our next measurement on the top. Additionally, there are two other ways that you can insert that move command without using the controller or what they sometimes call the jog box. You can come up to the main menu here and insert a move move point like that. Or you can see that it says control M is another option here. So you can move the arm to where you want it to be and then just use control M. You want to make sure that you insert your move at the proper place each time so if you're programming top down in command mode and you've made a measurement you will insert your move point after that. Sometimes you have to make multiple moves in order to get around an object for instance if I'm measuring here and I want to then measure on the back side I would probably want to move it up and then move it over before I come down to make that measurement. The arm is always going to try to move in the most direct path. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind at all times. Additionally, there's another way, um, or uh, let's say another uh, potential way of preventing uh, arm crashes and that is to use a feature that they call clearance cube and I mentioned this briefly in the last lesson. So a clearance cube can be accessed in a couple of different ways. From this quick measurement toolbar, you'll see this icon here is called clearance cube. If you click on this little tag here, you have a few different features here. So clearance cube definition, activate clearance cube motion, show clearance cube, and resize clearance cube. So what the clearance cube does is it sets an invisible box around your part that the probe is supposed to move outside of each time before it moves to the next point. Now it doesn't always work perfectly because you could say that uh, the box is 20 millimeters in, in each direction around this so the probe will back out 20 millimeters and then try to move to the next point. However, it may still come and bump into the part at 20 millimeters. And if you set the clearance cube out really wide, then you've got a lot of excess motion of the arm. So, you know, there's, there's pluses and minuses uh, to the use of this. Um, personally, I feel like most of the time a move command is a more efficient use of time. Um, when your DCC run occurs on your part, so you're making hundreds of these parts, you want the arm to move in as efficient a manner as possible between points. So the clearance cube doesn't always fit that bill because it adds a lot of excess motion. However, if you do want to try to use it, you must remember that once you set a clearance cube, it's on for your program for all time you can't then just turn it off and turn it back on. It is, if you select it for your program, it's going to run it. 
So let's talk about this. If we come up here to clearance cube definition, you get this little box where you can then activate your clearance cube motion and show your clearance cube. So it's going to create on the screen a sort of an outline of where this clearance cube is going to be. And this offset value that you see in the top here is the distance that it's going to come out in millimeters because that's what we have determined this program is running in down here. Um, personally, I think 10 millimeters is a little small. Probably 20, 25 millimeters is more the right size. You can also resize your clearance cube if it doesn't really work out for you. You can also go to this advanced tab, which has more information about your definition here. You can set min and max for x, y, and z um, in a non-CAD model. So if we did not have a CAD model, we're just programming right from the part, you could set up your clearance cube here. Um, there are additional constraints you can put into place. Uh, this obviously gets a little trickier as you go through. And you could turn on and off certain planes here if you feel that it's it's not meaningful for you in certain instances. So you have options. If we activate it here, it's on. That's it. If we want to show the clearance cube, we can do it here. And if you want to resize it, you can do it here. Uh, you can also get to it by, uh, let's see, uh, I always have a hard time finding these things in here. They're a little tricky to find. Um, typically, I think we want to insert it. Where is it? <laughs> Well, needless to say, it's there. You can find it. It's it's in one of these. I'm sorry I couldn't uh, come up with it quickly to show you, um, but I, I'm sure that it is here somewhere. Uh, anyway, so aside from clearance cube, we also have. Uh, a way of testing the program out prior to uh, it's actually running the the uh, final version of our programming here. So in here, if you go to uh, view. Path lines. You can see what happens here on the screen. It runs a quick sort of visual test of all the paths that the probe takes. And then if we go to operation graphic display window and we say collision detection, this sort of is a virtual run. We are doing our manual alignment here. That's why it's telling me to move on. And then the probe actually moves all around the surface of this. It does a little virtual test of everything we've got here that we measured. And now you can see in these in red lines on the screen here, these are places where we have problems with the path. And we come up with a collision list over here, and these are areas where we might need to fix things. So wherever you click in here, it's going to take you to the line portion of the software where you may need to make an adjustment. The alternative is just to run this and have a probe collide each time and then go and fix it at a later time. You can also turn off your path lines and return back to your, your normal mode here. So those are nifty ways of uh, checking out whether you may or may not have a problem with your software. We're going to show you this uh, 
process running in its entirety here. Obviously, if this was a really complex part like this, you probably would have wanted to program this to read more features on it. Um, I also wanted to show you real quickly uh, one last thing in this toolbar that I haven't shown you up till now, and that's these uh, label features over here. So you see here we have labels for each one of the features on here, and there are different ways that you can display these on here. So you can just sort of take a look at, at what these do. Uh, you can actually have a feature control frame right on the part, or you can turn it off. Um, you can sort of play with these tags and, and see what they do for you. Uh, I find just these basic tags are plenty to look at. It, it's you can also pull them out away so that you know your part is not so busy. So if you really want to see these in a different way, it's it's up to you how you want to view these. But obviously, the whole thing can get a little busy if you're if you're not real careful with these tags. So it's just some of the things that you can do here. I'm really not sure what that one does for us, to be honest. But uh, here's our feature control frame in its entirety. And I, what I didn't show you is that you can change these tolerances uh, individually on here. If we were to, to edit this particular label, um, we can see a little bit more about how this was created here. We could actually change these tolerances individually on here if we wanted to. We could change it as a plus minus. You can set uh, max material condition, least material condition. Um, you know, there, there's more you can do with this. Um, but everything is ultimately editable. Any line on here, if you want to edit this particular line right here, you can, you can edit it directly. an easy way to do this. We can just highlight it and say edit or F9. And here's all your nominals. You know, if you know that your nominals are a, a round number, you could change them. You can also change them directly right in the field here. You can highlight any number and change it. You can relabel any feature you want. There's a lot of power in here. Obviously, your, your theoreticals are the thing you really want to change. Your actuals are what were measured. You know, very easy to, to work with software, and it's just a matter of understanding all of these as you move along. So I'm going to run this from top down real quick so you can see it in operation. I took the liberty of putting some move commands in here and there so that uh, we can run this thing. So. It's going to start off by asking me to do this manual alignment. So I'm going to do it real quickly here. Three points on the top it's asking for. And you should also know that if you, I may have shown this to you, but if you make an erroneous hit, you can press this X button and it will erase the last hit. And then we're going to accept the feature. It's now asking us to take one of three on the front plane. So again, three hits over here. Accept that. And if you use this enough, you'll get good at this jog box. Main thing is you don't want these hits to go in too fast. So I'm going to turn off turtle mode, accept the feature. I put a move command there, but it obviously wasn't good enough. We're going to continue on here. And as you may have noticed, the lights like to go out around here. We have a motion sensor light in here. It makes life really exciting. Again, I put a move command in here to avoid probe crashes, so this alignment should continue on. Six hits on the front plane. I don't know why the graphic moves back and forth like it does, but that's the way the program was built. 
Again, I moved over to the side there. So we take four hits over here. And our alignment is complete. I did a move command up high there. That's going to work on this little notch over here. There are preferences you can change in here for the amount of distance the probe travels in and out from each measurement. I set it to a pre-hit and retract distance of two millimeters. It was at three millimeters and had the tendency to run into the back side of this notch. Right now we're measuring this top cylinder. And uh, another, by the way, you'll notice on here we can turn up and down the speed on this. So if I was making an initial run through on this and I was concerned about crashing the probe, I could slow it way down and let it run very slowly through. This way when it, it's moving, it doesn't move real quickly into something. But ideally when you're running finished program, you want it at full speed. Moving right along, we've got our way on down to these small cylinders, and there's a bunch of them. It takes a little while. So in that vein, you want to look at your parts and say what's really critical. What do I really need to know about this part? Do I need to know every single thing, or can I get enough? info out of some measurements and not others. Um, in this case, if you're pretty sure you're boring each one of these cylinders out the same uh, bit, you probably are going to drill them all to size, so maybe you only need to measure one. Or maybe you measure every other one around and you know get a sense of, of hole placement, etc. It's up to you to decide and, and ultimately as a programmer, you have to make these decisions for better or for worse. If you're just an operator of this equipment, then likely what you're doing is placing the part on the table, starting the software up, and running the manual alignment as instructed on screen. Um, if we put little operator comments in there, it's going to direct you as to where to go. And then from there, it should go into its DCC uh, mode and, and make all of the measurements. You still need to keep an eye on the machine. If, if things are badly out of place, you could potentially crash the probe. Uh, and you may have to extricate the probe from an area if, if there's a problem. So you do sort of need to be there at all times. Um, there are optical versions of these. You can have an optic on the end of this rather than a, a touch probe. Additionally, you can have what's known as a scanning probe. A scanning probe it has an entirely different look to it. It doesn't typically have a ball on the end. It's a straight tip. And the advantage to a scanning probe is that you can drag it across a surface like the top of this, and you can determine the flatness of it just from scan across the face. Additionally, with a roamer arm, which is more of a manual uh, approach to things. Um, you can also hold the probe on a surface and drag it across it while holding the button down and that is effectively a scan of the surface. So if you want to know flatness of something, you know, that's an area where you, know, you may get a little bang for your buck. So it's asking me right now to rotate the probe to 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees that way and I'm going to say OK. I put a couple move commands in here to get the probe out and around the corner so it can measure these lines underneath here.